there people welcome to Rico the Gearhead YouTube channel uh, where we give you motorcycle content many have come to love if you're new here do consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell so that you're updated whenever we post a new episode now today we do have the bed mobility iron horse 180 this has been the most requested bike uh, so far on the channel and I'm happy to you guys to actually bring the bike uh, to you to you this is the first impression review of the bike uh, the bike is brand new with about 122 kilometers on the clock uh, so it's fairly new uh, maybe you've ridden 100 kilometers maybe from the garage uh, maybe from the main uh, from the main uh, dealership now to the Hallingham dealership speaking of dealership I'd like to give a big shout out to Bell Mobility for having provided this bike to me to review uh, and also a big shout out to Marete for making all this possible. Uh, remember, they do sell these bikes for 140,000 Kenya shillings about there. And also, the benefit of this is that you do get financing. Unlike any other dealership out there, uh, you do get financing for this bike. Uh, if you are interested in getting in touch with them, do reach out to them on uh, Facebook, on Twitter, uh, at Beth Mobility. Yeah, and. Uh, you, you can always reach them out they are kind enough if they're kind enough to give me the bike to review they're also kind enough to answer your call I mean, come on yeah anyway let's get into the review this is the Beth Mobility uh, Iron Horse 180 from Beth Mobility no the Beth Iron Horse sorry this is a Beth Iron Horse uh, 180 it's a 180 cc engine four stroke um, air cooled 180 cc bike engine whatever Anyway, we do have, let's talk, let's talk a little bit about the specs. Uh, like we said, it's a 180cc four-stroke air-cooled engine. I'm not quite sure about the power figures, but I will post it down in the, in the video somewhere. Yeah, uh, speaking of which, a lot of people have asked about uh, how does the bike compare to a TNT 150? Well, don't worry, uh, this is wor with this video we're going to be covering just exact that. We're going to be covering just that. And also to, on to add on top of that, we're going to be also adding to the mix the RTR 160 because that's the kind of range or that's the kind of bikes that most people are actually uh, interested in uh, the bike this it's cheap so with cheap you do pay what you, you do get what you pay for and we are going to be looking at that momentarily now where this bike seems to thrive in is uh, city city commute but before we do get into where this bike thrives, let's talk about a little bit about the ergonomics of the bike. Now the bike is a normal street bike, like your normal border border bike and all, you know, like it's it's like a border border in short. Uh, you do get your uh, front, you, you, for your levels actually, you have your front and sh back shifters. But if you, that's, I think what they were trying to do is, they were trying to kind of... Uh, um, accommodate both anybody who's been used to the sport bike uh, life like uh, the single shift pedal at the front and uh, also for the border border guys who are kind of used to shifting back it's also kind of kind of the best um, I'd say it's kind of the best uh, beginner bike per se because um, because a lot of a lot of training schools or normal training schools they usually train with uh, border borders unlike uh, let's say like in, in Okay. Unlike the inked bikers, whereby they use uh, the Kibo uh, 150 to train their students, uh, this bike actually is the best of both worlds. I think both uh, for sport bike and uh, it has a little bit aspects of a sport bike aspect into it, into integrated into the bike. Um, you also do get these wonderful um, frame sliders. I'm not sure how sturdy they are, but they all they seem to be quite better since they are bolted right onto the frame of the bike. And then unlike the Jincheng, these ones do seem to hold their uh, their power and weight. They do seem quite sturdy enough to actually, if the bike falls, they do have this rubber. You do have these rubbers on the ends to keep, uh, or rather to absorb the shock more f more well and also to prevent uh, sparks and frictions coming from the bike. Uh, now let's talk, talk about the ergonomics of the bike. The bike, like I said, is a normal street bike. You do get an upward posture. You do get this comfortable um, rider triangle. It's, it's a kind of a regular rider triangle that you have going on here. Uh, you also do have the normal you have the normal um, 
handlebar yeah, I mean it's raised it's quite comfortable uh, nothing too fancy about it uh, the other thing about you do get is the the TFT dash or oh, you do have an analog slash uh, digital tachometer here you do have the speedo digital speedo here and the analog rev meter here now it does redline at about 10,000 rpm that seems to be the maximum rev range and uh, yeah let's uh, down to the ergonomics also the seat the seat is a one-piece seat which seems to be soft at first it's, it seems to be soft to the touch but Apart from that, it does feel a bit hard when you sit on it. Um, yeah, it does feel a bit hard when you sit on it, but I guess that's something that you have to get used to once in a while. I'm, not, I'm sure the people who have ridden this bike quite a lot actually don't even seem to notice it. Now, this bike, uh, suspension-wise, um, I don't like the front suspension. Just look at how, I'm not even putting a lot of force, but look at how for the bike dips i mean this can be quite dangerous especially if you're in a tough situation and uh when you're braking the bike does go uh, that's deep down quite a bit it feels like um it feels like a bike with low suspension oil you know what i mean and uh yeah for the fuel economy i guess this is a perfect bike i mean it's a 180 cc i've just opened up 100 bob and uh i think you're good to go it's like any other border border out there i think it's it's a very good economical bike for you to have um uh, apart from that oh it also is uh an electric and kickstart you do have your kickstart here just in case you lose your no no you lose a key so just in case you have a malfunction or maybe even uh, the possibility of the the possibility of the battery dying that doesn't keep you that you don't have to worry about um, oops yeah it can't fit there you don't have to worry about oh come on you don't have to worry about uh, the bike dying on you you don't have to worry about the bike dying on you or something uh yeah speaking of brakes this bike has very bad front brakes despite it being a disc brake i actually prefer the rear brake more it has a bit more grip to it and adding to the fact that um the way that the front suspension dips uh, it can be quite dangerous in a in a tricky situation uh, or rather in a situation that requires you to act fast and brake hard <laughs> actually prefer using i actually like the previous uh, the, the rear brake it's much more solid but i guess you do like i said you do get uh what you pay for this is 140,000 bike kenya bike 140,000 kenya shillings uh bike now speaking of which you're going to be comparing it to the benelli tnt 150 and also to the Apache RTR 160 because I, those are the two bikes that I've ridden um, and I've reviewed on the channel if you'd like to see more about those two the reviews about those two bikes uh, do check out my channel I will put also them somewhere along the screen so that you can see them in person and also make you uh, ha also have a better judgment for this now build wise quality wise I'd say um, Build-wise, let if we put away the suspension factor of it, if we put away that, if we ignore the suspension factor of it, I mean it's a, uh, it's not actually it's, it's an okay bike for somebody who is strictly under budget because um, I think for for now the, I think the 150 goes for around um, last I checked it went for around 165. Let's say it goes for around 100 and. Uh, 140,000 no let's say it goes right now for 180,000 Kenya shillings but this bike goes for 140 now you do get the bump up in uh, engine CC but you do lose on some aspects of the build quality for say for example um, like I said the front brakes are a bit wanting despite this being a new bike um, so there are no excuses that the person the There are no excuses that the person, uh, the owner of the bike actually maybe doesn't know how to use this. this, is actually a brand new bike. So I think that's a major concern that you need to look out for. Um, in any case, you don't need to worry because your back brake kind of compensates for, for that for that um, slight error maybe maybe this bike maybe it might be another bike I don't know yeah so another thing is the gears 
uh, smooth. I do like the the shifting part of it. I do like the smooth gear shifting of it. It's, it's quite smooth and quite linear. The power delivery is actually quite talky down low. Uh, I'm not quite sure about the top speed. I, you know, it's it's still a new bike. I just don't want to. Um, I just don't want to maybe push it quite far to the limits uh, because it's a new bike. I don't want to spoil it and all. Uh, yeah, so this bike is actually well suited for a beginner, I'd say. Uh, between this and the 150, I'd actually go for the 150. Well, because despite if you take away the weight factor of the... Actually, how much does this bike weigh? I'm not quite sure, but if we put away the weight factor and the build quality, I think you do get a lot more for the bed for the TNT 180. Oh, for the TNT 150, sorry. You do get more. You do get good brakes. You do get... Uh, you do get good brakes, you do get um, good seats, good suspension. Um, not to complain that this one has bad suspension, but the rear ones are fine. The dual, uh, the rear um, shocks are fine. They're not, they're not, they're not, they're, they're not bad. But the front suspension is something to, it does ask for a lot more to be wanted for. You know what I mean? Uh, well, apart from that, from the 150, I think. If you're actually, if you're somebody who is completely on a budget, I think this is the best bike to go for. I mean, uh, it, it has races, it's gone to races. I mean, I can see why uh, the best mobility uh, race team actually races this bike. It's quite fast. It has that fast punch. It has that big punch that uh, it's quite required on a, on a race track, especially on the, uh, especially on the, what's it called? On the Whistling Morans, which is quite a small track. Uh, it's this bike actually has that quite punch to actually take it through uh, the track and maybe even win some races now there's something else that I did notice about the this bike is when you rather when you indicate um, you can see that both both lights or the both turn signals uh, on the dash do light up I think that can be quite confusing but it's, it's not a big deal I mean not quite a big deal that's not something that you can actually um, as long as you remember which side you are going and uh, don't get confused I think you're fine uh, and also do like the fact that they have this disc brake on if, even though it does little it does it's not that great, that's what I'm trying to say. Now, comparing this to the Apache RTR 160, um, I think they are fairly the same, with the 160 having, of course, the better uh, build quality. So if I were to rank it to, according to like performance, uh, if I were to rank it according to performance, I'd say this one would be at the top, followed by the Apache, and then followed by the TNT 150. If, if it comes to build quality wise, build quality wise, I'd say the 150 comes first, the TNT 150 comes first, then the Apache RTR 160, and then finally we do have the bed Iron Horse 180. Now, for the temperature wise, it doesn't get quite hot. Maybe it's because I'm kind of used to um, riding big bikes which, are, which get kind of quite hot um, when you ride them. I do like the sitting posture on this, it's it's quite comfortable. Now I can see s this bike being used for, let's say, um, the Boda Boda industry, uh, you know, the maybe if you're in Uber or maybe you are somebody who has a delivery service, I can actually see you having this bike because it's cheap, uh, doesn't seem to quite require much to maintain it, just the normal um, changes like oil change and spark plug check and the oil filter and air filter and the, all that uh, beeswax you know if you if you if you actually if you are somebody who can who who actually likes that kind of um, if you actually require this kind of bike uh, like I said, it's also electric start and you also have the kick start. You can actually use this bike for your, uh, if you have a business house, if you want to actually have a delivery service or you, you want to get into border border uh, industry or even in the, let's say we have the Jumia, you know, we, have, we do have a lot of border borders guys who have Jumias and stuff. And also about the Uber Eats and Glovo and that kind of stuff. I think this is a good bike to have. Um, yeah, and also it's a good beginner bike to that matter yeah so I do like it it's it's not bad the rear suspension is a bit hard and the front suspension is a bit soft which is weird 
Well, like I said, I, I think from the last video, I think what they do is they have different manufacturers um, build this bike for you. So they have a different manufacturer for the frame. They have a different manufacturer, maybe even for the suspension. They do have a different manufacturer for the engine. So at Beth, at the Beth headquarters, that's where they quite assemble them. That's where they assemble them to make it now the Beth Iron Horse. And if you look, there's actually a... What the hell, man? Can't you see me? And if you actually look, the, the, like there's a there's a bike actually in in Rwanda that looks exactly like the Zontes 200J. That's something that I didn't notice that it had that they do have there. Uh, let's get away from this traffic. You really have to be careful in these Kenyan roads. But I do like the, the handling aspect of this bike. It's quite... It is quite nifty. I do like it's, it. It kind of reminds me of riding my 150. It does feel a bit stable. Now, I do get the feeling of the high vibrations that you get, especially on your feet and the handlebars when you go at higher speeds or higher RPMs. Uh, I do get why they were saying that. And I do like, I do, also, I do love the, the bra engine braking of this bike. It's quite phenomenal. Uh, it's quite good, actually. Ooh, this guy is coming in fast. Like I said, you really have to be careful with that front brake because it can mess you up real bad. So where does this bike seem to thrive in? Now this bike seems to thrive in, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, city commute, city commuting. This is also the perfect bike for uh, commuting around the, the streets of Nairobi or the wherever the streets that you are. Uh, like I said, it's also good for delivery. It's light, it's nimble. Uh, it can get you out of pretty sticky situations. It, it, it is also quite economical uh, on the like I, I just put 100 bob fuel and it's already two bars. That means if you put around 500 bob, I think you, 500 to 600 bob, you can get a full tank. And th I think that can get you quite far uh, wherever you need to go for a very long time. I mean, so 180cc doesn't require much uh, effort. Um, the, the exhaust note on the bike is a bit subtle. Uh, it's a bit buzzy. It's, it, it has a s nice, it has a nice hum to it. Uh, I don't know, maybe the clutch sensor is a bit sensitive on uh, on my part. But yeah, I really, okay, the things to take out from this bike is that um, you really have to be careful about the front suspension and the front brakes. That's something that you need to look out for. Uh, and the other, ah, come on! That's interesting. Okay, that was interesting. Let's see what's the top speed of this bike. You can comfortably do about wow fifth gear is the last gear so it's a five gear bike yeah careful about that front brake So if you're a beginner bike, if you're a beginner rider out there looking to get into biking, and you're not quite sure uh, what to get, and also if you're, and also if you're somebody who is uh, on a budget or has a business and wants to to do this kind of stuff, you know this is actually the good bike for you. going to be going back to the to the dealership whereby we got this like 
of, of all the bikes that I've ridden, this one is actually the one that I'd, I would actually recommend to someone maybe who wants to start out. I mean, it's it's all. I usually say don't start on a 150, but uh, the 180 is also not so bad because it has it does have the the power that a beginner rider may be looking for. It does have that exciting factor. It does have that exciting factor. Now let's have a look. Let's what I was trying to say before my mic cut off was that from this is actually one of the best beginner bikes out there because uh, strictly this is especially for someone who is strictly on a budget and uh, you know you have to consider other things like gear which can be quite expensive if you put if you factor in uh, the safety aspect of it I mean for just I think for 1,000 141,000 Kenya shillings you do get additional um, install the the crash bars or the frame sliders you do get that additional um and also if you're also looking to get into business is actually a good bike uh also strictly like i said it's on a budget very easy to maintain very easy to handle and uh keep and maintain also by the way if you'd like to read or rather you'd like to see who right if you'd like to see the other review that better mobility did on the same same bike uh, i will post it in the credits and also at the link in the description if you'd like to see that and now without further ado i hope you enjoyed this video as much as i did making it uh give us a like tell us what you thought about this video in the comment section below we do love reading and replying to all your comments out there and uh apart from that that's it for this video thanks so much for watching stay safe ride safe and i'll see you in the next one peace